All right, guys. Today I want to give you a little bit of a, an inside look at preparation for a backcountry hunt. Uh, specifically, I just got drawn for a very unplanned uh, <laughs> hunt out west. So I'm going to be going on an elk hunt, backcountry hunt where I was not planning for this. All right, I wasn't going out west this year, but it happened. And now I'm just tweaking and pivoting my training a bit. The, the hunt will be less than two weeks away. I'm 13 days out. And I'm just pivoting my training a little bit to allow me to adapt and really just be most prepared, okay, for the demands of that type of hunt. This is a mountain hunt, okay, potentially solo, where I'm gonna have short period of time to hunt. I'm only gonna have four to five days. So I'm gonna be really charging hard right through that duration there. There's not gonna be a lot of time to really pace myself. I gotta find elk, uh, I gotta get in. It could be that I'm spending the night in the woods. Um, basically have to be ready for everything. Now, I've been training right along, all right? I train all year round. However, I do change the emphasis in my training throughout the year and our programs do that also. An eight week program, is not the same in weeks one through three, four, five, as it is from you know six, seven, and eight, as you get closer and closer to the season. No different than how you would train an athlete preparing for sport. Okay, this is our sport. We're hunter athletes, and we're gonna we're gonna prepare and periodize these programs in such a way that we're we're totally ready to rock and roll when the season begins. So in this case, I've been training for the Northeast seasons, which isn't until November, it's like eight weeks out. So very foundational strength, isometrics, uh, you know, more of, less of an emphasis on work capacity right now, uh, as we're really trying to build these foundations. So I'm pivoting, right? I got this hunt in two weeks, and I'm gonna start to introduce, okay, one, I'm gonna up the volume, all right? So this week, every single day of the week, really for the next like nine days, okay, up until about three days out, I'm going to be hitting uh, work capacity training, okay, along with movement, uh, mobility, making sure that I can really move well, some movement capacity work. But today's session is a really good example of what these work capacity or high intensity continuous training sessions would look like, okay. We're not we're not gonna hammer the system with super high intensity intervals. Um, what we wanna do is make sure that I'm ready to handle five, potentially five days in a row. So there's your needs assessment. Five days in a row of continuous effort, long days, right? Like from before daylight, hiking in to throughout the day, potentially on my feet, moving ups, the downs, the side hills, etc. So how do we prepare the body for that? Well, we're gonna hit it with these work capacity sessions every single day, knowing that I'm layering it on top of what I've been doing in my training, okay, all the way through the months. That's a huge advantage, and that's why you should be training year round, always, always ready, and always prepare, like sweat every day, right? So I'm able to now layer this onto that, all right, pivot, and be totally prepared for what's to come in a few weeks. So here we go. Uh, I started this session with a five minute fan bike ride. And that ride is at, you know, like 80, 85% intensity, probably more like 80%, all right? I could definitely link sentences together, although I would certainly be strained, like if I was talking to somebody with me, it would certainly be strained, but I could definitely link those sentences together. So I'm not sprinting in that five minutes, okay? From there, I come out and I've got five different movements that I'm gonna go through for four rounds, all right? Now these are more strength-focused movements. I increase the heart rate there on the bike. Now I'm gonna challenge the muscles, okay, the skeletal muscle system to, to handle this mechanical work. So I'm gonna grab dumbbells. These are, these are heavy, but not, not maximal low, all right? And I'm gonna go through 10 walking lunges. Now, guys, these could be step-ups, they could be reverse lunge, they could be a lunge in place. The key here is that I'm training the lower body, okay, strength movement for the lower body, in a more unilateral or single leg type of position, rather than a bilateral squat, you know, or a deadlift. So when I get done with those 
10 lunges. I'm gonna do five curl and press, all right? Then I'm gonna set those down. I'm gonna go into a sled push and pull. So I'll push my sled 15 yards down, and then I'm gonna grab straps, pull that sled back. Now, I've talked about this before with a sled. Pushing forward is very much like acceleration or going uphill. That's ascending. Pulling the sled backwards, more here, center of mass is behind the feet, that would be preparing you more for like the demands of coming downhill, think deceleration. Okay, it's great to be able to have both. From there, I'm gonna grab sandbag. Pretty heavy bag, all right? I'm gonna grab the bag, throw it up to front rack position, and then I'm gonna carry that 40 yards total. So in the gym here, I have 20 yards down and back. We'll carry 20 yards down, 20 yards back. Then I drop down to the floor, grab one of my dumbbells, I have a renegade row for 10 reps. So these are not like, it's not like exactly what's happening necessarily in the woods, although it's very similar, right? Uh, I'm challenging the entire body, so this full body strength workout. There's certainly similarities to what I'm going to encounter in the woods, all right? And I'm gonna do that for four rounds. All right? I'm not going to let my heart rate spike up out of control. I'm trying to maintain this. This is continuous effort work. So I'm trying to maintain this, okay, coming in with pre-fatigue from the bike or a warm-up, however you want to look at it. Coming in, doing my four rounds of strength, then going back to the bike and finishing there with another five minutes. Okay? And that piggybacks on top of probably 20 minutes of movement capacity, uh, think mobility, flexibility work, working on the shoulders, any correctives you might need to go through, piggybacking on top of that, okay, which I started the session with, all right? And I'm gonna do this every single day, like I said, not this exact same session or these exact movements, but this same type of scenario where it's work capacity, I'm trying to do these uh, strength type movements while in a fatigue state, for you know, longer periods of time. I'm trying to increase my capacity to do this work, okay? And then ultimately be ready for day after day after day so that when I get out there, that's one of the biggest mistakes that hunters will make is that they might train one or two days a week and they go really hard, okay? Train on Tuesday and Friday and they go really hard in those sessions and those might be great training sessions, but <laughs> they, they go out to hunt and they go Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. By Wednesday, they're smoked, okay? Their central nervous system is not prepared for this. They're just their, their connective tissues alone can't handle the no recovery, okay? So hitting the system day after day after day in like smaller doses will help you adapt, okay, to this type of stress. So that when you do get into like, okay, here we go. Day three, I'm crawling out of my tent and I'm gonna do this thing again. Body's ready to go. You might be a little stiff, all right? No big deal because when you get that, you get some blood flow and you get the body moving, it's ready to charge again. And that's really, uh, in a nutshell, what's most important with your training uh, in making sure that you are not just preparing for the movement demands, but also for the volume and the, the duration of that, of that hunt. For, for myself in the Northeast, much tougher uh, than going on a, a elk hunt out west, uh, and I've said that before, way tougher. One, because I do it for the entire season. Okay, so 30 days of hunting is much different than five. All right, so, so that's something to consider and when looking and planning and scheduling your training. Maybe you don't do as long of a session two days a week, and you're able to get four five, maybe six, like I said, sweat every day, sessions in over the course of the week. And that could potentially provide a lot more effective training uh, exposure, okay? So that you can have the best hunt and the best like um, adventure possible, okay? And just be, just be physically and mentally prepared for those challenges that you're gonna face. I hope this helps you out, guys. Keep charging.